we have defined our ISR and from the ISR we have to increment that current time variable. But there is one problem. Since current time, you know, we have selected it as a non-static variable. I mean, whenever you create a object of the main structure, every time one copy of current time variable will be there. I mean, currently we made it current time as a private attribute of the object. But that is not actually a good idea. We'll make some changes here. We'll make it as a static variable. That means a single copy variable, which is generic to all the objects of this main structure because that makes sense the current time variable can't be a private variable of each object because a current time variable tracks the time time is same for all the objects of this main structure let's consider a scenario you know you have created two objects object one and object two of this main structure let's say object one drives display one and it displays time zone x time in 24 hour format let's say and object 2 drives another display and it displays time zone y's time in 12h format no matter how many objects you create the time is the same this time should be generic to these objects object 1 takes this time and it converts that into a time zone format and it displays that likewise object 2 does that means we will keep this attribute outside this object that means we will make this current time attribute as a static variable that would be a good idea that's why what i'm going to do now here select the current time and make it as static and let's give one class operation this is a class operation to get that current time so get current time this class operation I want to make it as a static one because it accesses the static attribute what we just added that is current time it just returns the current time I will keep the return type as u int 32 underscore t and you can make this as public no problem visibility it doesn't matter actually here I mean in C you can keep this as public this doesn't affect this uh, function and code will put later actually this you know returns the value of current time we will now generate the code the code is generated let's look at the code as you can see here now the current time variable should disappear from here i'll close this and let me generate the code once again here you see the current time now went outside so now it came here this is a get current time get current time static function to return the value of this variable we'll implement this function later now let's implement another function or another class operation add operation and here i'll call this as update current time the return type is void and this is also a static function why it's a static function because it cannot access any private variables of or private attributes of clock alarm it can only manipulate the static variables like current time and also note that as i mentioned in the previous video the static class operations will not have access to the me pointer now let's generate the code let's go back to the code and here you see we got this function clock alarm update current time here we will put some code if we have to increment this current time variable plus plus is equal to if it is equal to let's say max time then we'll make this as zero and the max time variable i just defined in the clock alarm underscore sm dot h and this is the max time this is actually 24 into 3600 zero zero into 10 that's the max time in the sm.h please define that macro and this clock alarm update current time this function will call from the interrupt service routine we'll call that from here let's go to the interrupt service routine and you just call that from here in the function update current time you have to add the code here because since the file is managed by this software I cannot save anything here that's why this code has to be there on the 
qm tool for the update current time function i'm going to add that code here now let's build the code so now whenever interrupt happens this variable will be updated we just completed the timer code in our previous video and uh, in this lecture let's display something on the lcd let's go to our model this is our model and for the model you already know that there should be one starting point this is the starting point so initial pseudo state and this is the initial transition let's define some action for the initial transition that action you can mention here the code real code you have to write here whatever you write here it will be copied to the file during the code generation and whatever you write here will be considered as a pseudo code and whatever you write here will not be considered during the code generation this is a pseudo code section this is a real code section initially we will set the current time variable to some value to set the value of the current time variable let me create one more class operation i'll make it as a static class operation i'll call this as uh, set current time and the return type is void and visibility just keep it as public generate the code and for this function we'll add one parameter add parameter here you can set the name of the parameter i'll just give the name new current time and type as u in 32 underscore t now let's go to the set current time function and here we'll add the code after that let's generate the code here you can see the set current time in this function we have to modify or we have to set a new value to the current time variable but you cannot do just like that because that variable is being shared with the isr that's why before you modifying the current time variable so you have to first disable the interrupt modify it and then re-enable the interrupt for that we can make use of sreg register just search for sreg in the atmel's data sheet and you see sreg is avs it's a status register and it has a bit 7 which is global interrupt enable this bit can be manipulated using sci and cli instructions in the program first we'll disable the interrupt before that we will save the status of this status register before doing any modification to this register i'll just create a variable u int 8 underscore t save sreg is equal to sreg and then disable the interrupt cli just use this function cli or it's an inline function or it's a macro actually it is there in interrupt.h which executes the inline assembly code which executes the instruction cli and after that clock alarm current time so you have to make modification to this variable set the new value and after that you just restore the status of sreg that's it i'll just copy this code and i'll put that code in the model under set current time function let's go to the model and let's call that function set current time we will assign some new value i'll call this as initial current time macro which will define this macro later and after that for the alarm time also we will assign some initial value i'll call this as initial alarm time and after that mode for this mode we'll use some initial value me of uh, time underscore mode is equal to i'll just initially keep mode as 12h and the alarm status we'll keep the alarm status as off initially alarm status is equal to alarm off we can create all these macros in the sm.h let's create an enum here called uh, time mode 24h mode 12h and let's create another enum enum alarm status alarm off 
alarm on like that and after that we'll keep some more macros here define let's define this initial current time initial current time let's uh, keep 10 hours 10 hours that means 10 multiplied by 3600 plus 10 minutes that is 10 multiplied by 60 plus 10 seconds and this value should be multiplied by 10 let's multiply that by 10 this is 10 hours 10 minutes 10 seconds all are unsigned long values and for the initial alarm time you just assign some values i'll keep it as 8 hours i'll just remove this 8 hours that's it the initial alarm time is 8 o'clock remember that all these values represent the 24 hour format and for the alarm you need not to multiply it by 10 just remove that so this is the initial value you can give anything you like let's save this and let's generate the code and now you can check in the initial transition function this is a function which implements the initial transition you can see that these codes are here in the next lecture we will see how to display this time information on the lcd